Hello again and Happy New Year. This will be the first edition of Gaia's Voice for January of 2010. Thank you for all of the wonderful comments and suggestions that we've been receiving about the subscription. We hope to continue to make more improvements as we go along and to welcome your comments, of course. The subject for today's session with Gaia is one that was inspired by one of our subscribers, so thank you for that. The question came stateside uh, and has to do with our health as a, as a community of humans and uh, the health of the body and our health care industry. And it seems like a lot is changing in this regard, not only here in the States, but also around the world. So it seems like an opportune moment to ask Gaia everything that we can know about this subject. And so I hope that along with me you will welcome this next installment. And until next time, thanks for sharing this moment with me and the journey as well. Indeed, dear ones. And then again, I greet you, as always, to consider a subject of great proportion. How does one measure the soul? For it is of great proportion. And yes, the subject to be considered this day is the body. But I tell you now at the outset that you do not know what the gift of body is. In fact, the body is a very vast energy system. And in its own way, though you do not see it this way, it is as vast as the soul. And again, I tell you that although each of you have a body, possess one or or are possessed by one, as the case may be, most of you do not have an intimate relationship with your body because you do not recognize what it is or truly how it is connected to you. Likewise, you have a soul and a relationship with your soul. But it is also a little bit remote. Most believe that in their own way they will return to their soul or their soul presence when their time upon the earth, their embodied time, is complete. Or they believe that their soul is deeply connected to them now but that their soul somewhat sits back, observing the process, observing how well you live out your purpose or your creativity, only stepping in here and there when asked for great support or during times of great stress or challenge. And so to examine this subject well, we must overcome the belief systems associated with both the body and the soul. Because in essence both of these are two sides of the same coin. They are not separate. One did not come first. The soul is ever, ever present. And the body or a body is a manifestation of the soul's creativity and of your desire to express yourself on a variety of levels or dimensions, only one of these being physical or requiring a physical body. The soul, then, is ever-present. It is an ever-present part of your creativity. A very fine specimen, time-less, meaning that it does not need to relate to time. And the body need not also, as we will see. That is a construct of the brain 
and of the time that you are living in now. And so the soul, in its ever-present wisdom, in its ever-present creativity, makes all manner of thoughts and things available to you. It says here, you may choose from this library, or that store, or the other place, or that dimension, this planet, or where it will be. The soul accesses for you, orders for you, the unlimited. The unlimited does not mean that it brings everything to you at once. It brings to you what is most useful. It orders the universe for you. And so if you were to say to the soul, Oh, look, I am getting married next year. The soul would organize all of the beauty or majesty or creativity associated with that thought that you have brought to the soul. Of course, then we must say, you. What is you? If you are bringing something to the soul, it would seem as if you are separate from that, and yet you are not. You are bound to the soul. It is bound to you. When you look into a mirror, you see an image. Any time that you were to look into a mirror, you would see an image. Sometimes it would be more clear, other times distorted or cloudy. But you would see a representation of yourself. The soul is the same. Any time that which you are, which in truth is pure awareness, looks into the mirror called the soul, you will see a version of yourself that looks like what you are portraying, envisioning, desiring, fearing, creating, or like that. Depending upon what your awareness reveals to the soul, the soul then brings to you, advances to you, shares with you what is most useful aligned with that. And so when a lifetime upon the earth, just as an example, for we could choose other bodies or other planetary experiences, when your awareness reveals to the soul a little bit about what your journey will be like, the soul immediately brings to you, fashions for you, all that would be most useful, most creative to you, from the most practical, the most mundane, to the most majestic. And of these you begin to dress yourself, you begin to dress your awareness with certain thoughts, with certain feelings, with ideas and ideals. The longer that you pause while you are dressing yourself, the more that the soul is able to give to you or infuse upon your awareness. Imagine that these would appear as small filament-like sensations, lightly attaching themselves to your awareness, sometimes creating a memory of another time, another place, another life, sometimes creating a great desire that you may have for the life that you are embarking upon. Again, the longer that you pause to dress yourself in these filaments of light, the closer you will be to your soul, the more that you will be able to draw to yourself in terms of wonders during your life and the more well-worn will be your path that directs you back and forth to the soul in order to retrieve more and more. It is not a one-time sale. So it is not as what you do not take at the beginning. You cannot go to retrieve. Oh no, the soul, the ever-present partner that is the soul is always, I tell you, 
always available to retrieve for you what you need, whether it is care for the body, a concern for your health, an advancement for the mind, a new job prospect, or a physical attribute, such as more hair or less weight for those who are interested. Truly there is no limit to this. And yet what is most important at the outset is the establishment of that relationship. Of course, once you find yourself at first in the more dense, unconscious realms of the earth, it is as sooner the possible that you can establish yourself, your awareness, as soon as you can awaken your awareness, shake the dross from that awareness, and remember where you have been and what you are, the quicker you will be able to dress yourself in more filaments of light or activate those that you have brought with you. And therein is the first stumbling block for many. Because imagine even that you are a young tot crawling about on the floor in front of your mother, and there is the mother sitting and conversing with a friend and saying, I wonder why this one has not walked yet, why the other one walked as early as eight or ten months, and this one is still crawling about. Well, that already went into your thought process, and now you are already beginning to wonder, what is wrong with this body? Look what my mother, the caregiver, the only one that I know, has said. And whether or not you already understand even the language or the words that have been spoken, the experience has already also bonded itself to you. And in the same way as the filaments of light that we have spoken of have bonded themselves, well, the more denser objects, thoughts and things, they have their own magnetic glue. And even before your first year upon the earth is complete, you are full of thoughts and sensations. And some of these are to your benefit and credit, and some already begin to delay your journey. Some already begin to create stress in the body that already begins the aging process. And so there you are as a babe, with life barely beginning, and already you are aging faster than you know. And what a pity, for humanity does not yet know how to nurture the new, how to reveal to it all forms of possibilities. But here I reveal to you the first future that you can count upon, that you can depend upon. For this will change, this will change, and it will not be more than one or two generations forward of this moment before a different kind of parental education is given. And although you may feel that putting a small tot in front of a television may not be good for its unfoldment, I tell you that within a few generations there will be a special form of television, a little bit more like a hologram that looks and sounds a little bit like a future, a future vision. And so a child will be able to dial in for themselves based upon their own energetic matrix that will be revealed within the hologram and there they will be able to fine-tune any less than improved upon characteristics that the body inherited. In other words this hologram will hold a matrix of the more perfected versions of this child of this being and there begin to initiate, well, repairs or upgrades, you may call them, fixing genetic properties of the heredity, of the family strain, which by then will have been understood more than it is now, 
and already making improvements, suggestions to the brain that the child or the being, for this will be available to adults as well, they will be able to gradually change their fortune as it would be. Now, this will be given primarily in the beginning to those that have certain health risks, those that are born with certain congenital defects, those that carry certain strains that humanity and those within the medical communities have found that would not be good to project into the future. And so there will be the beginnings of the ability to arrest these throwbacks to other times so that there will be less genetic defect to body or mind. How this will come about will yet unfold and it will be a little bit different than what you imagine. Humanity is a very curious sort and even those that are among your most educated for the most part your great discoveries are simply stumbled upon. While one is busy searching for this they find that and find that it is in fact more useful than the original thing that they were searching for. So it will go a little bit like that. A little bit as a stumbling block that turns into a building block. And so one will give rise to the next and the next and as we will continue to see as the subject unfolds there will be a great then change in how humanity's health and wellness unfolds and how the body is perceived and what in fact it is able to do. And so to return to our introduction of the subject it must be understood that the body is a spiritual organism that is attached and deeply so to the soul. One cannot see the soul but for the most part it is taken for granted that one does have a soul an eternal aspect that guides one that one returns to. The physical body can be seen and in terms very human the physical body is considered a mammal part of the animal kingdom. It is not necessarily so. It is simply that out of all of the material that can be found the soul and the wisdom keepers who improve upon life in every world have found that this particular body type which has similarities to those of the animal kingdom that this particular body type is the one that can improve upon itself most quickly it is one that is highly adaptable to circumstances it is highly able to endure certain but not all stresses and stressful factors given to different dimensions but particularly at this point the third dimensions and that it is also able to transcend its circumstances and under the proper care scenarios thoughts beliefs ideas and much more and so your body in essence is also an eternal organism because of its ability to transcend all of these factors now if it were understood as this as in its own way equivalent to the soul but somewhat more dense in its proportion then at the outset perhaps more care would be given to it it would be credited with more intelligence it would be educated in different and more creative ways 
this will come to pass. But of course it has not yet. And so we must speak then in terms of past and present and future in order to give you a true unfoldment of what is taking place. The body then is that which is its own wisdom, its own library. But in order to access the body's wisdom libraries, there must be, there must exist a state of trust, one that enfolds thought, brain, heart, feeling, soul, experience. All of these must be bonded together into one filament of light in order for the highest experiences to come about. And because that is not the case now or yet, that is why the body seems limited in its ability to access its own health, dependent upon every external thought and diagnosis of a community that understands very little for the most part. Again, that will change. But to hammer the point home, as they say, your body is not a machine of a variety of movable parts that will wear out over time. Your body is not at constant risk of acquiring disease. Your body is not simply a random set of atoms and molecules under the direction of a brain that can be extinguished. What your body is, is a perfect energetic field. It is indeed a collection of atoms and molecules, but those that are divinely arranged, purposefully and creatively so. And what is the purpose of the body then? What is the purpose of the physical body? For most within earshot of these words understand that there is a seeking of the purpose of life. And so contained within the purpose of life, there is the purpose of the body. So be it. The purpose of the body, then, is to assist in the discovery of the meaning of life. It is very similar to the purpose of the soul or to the purpose associated with your lifetime. It is to assist you by carrying your awareness, your thoughts, concerns, dreams and discoveries at the experiential level and to assist you in finding the meaning of life based upon its ability to direct experiences. Now, of course, it would be under the body's desire that all of the experiences in your life be fulfilling ones. But some are not. Some of these are not fulfilling to you because you have not understood then their purpose or how to change them. You see, once an experience begins and you see it all of the way through until it appears that it is done and then you say, Who oh, made it through that one? I hope that never happens to me again. You do not say, That was an interesting selection I have made from a menu. And I believe I will choose differently again. And so, you see, we continue to see that the body presently reacts to stimuli that happens to it because it is not bonded with the filaments of light that assist it to see that it also has a choice. The body does have a choice. But more often than not, the only time that the body's choice is heard is when there is cause for concern. By the alarm, the five alarm bell goes off, then you become interested in the body long enough to say, what is wrong with it? 
and why is it reacting this way, and why is it not carrying me to where I wish to go to my appointed rounds, why is it preventing me from being this or doing that? And so now there must be a deeper understanding. The body married to the soul, to your awareness, to your desires, has purpose. It has intelligence. It has creativity. And its job is to assist your awareness in a life that is full of experiences that lead to the deeper meaning of life. Everything that your body does is designed to bring your awareness to a higher order. But in order to do that, it must have the acknowledgement, the awareness, the coupling of other resources, including those of the soul. It must, in many ways, access the soul's awareness or the soul's memories. And more of the time, truly, it is not allowed to do so. In terms of religion, there is a great holding back. The soul or what will come later, after one has accomplished or worked towards one's goals, or proven oneself worthy in the face, then, of a higher deity, then the rewards will come. It is rarely said to a human that they may reap many rewards while in the body, not the least of which is the improvement of the longevity of the body, its ability to rejuvenate, improve, and care for itself. That is left to other external means. And so the body then is a field of energies. And collectively... Humanity has discovered and decided that when it packs all of these molecules and atoms together very tightly, they appear to represent a human body. And this field of awareness, then, is what you use to navigate your awareness in this physical reality. To be clear, the body is purely a construct of the collective mind of humanity, and it can be altered greatly so, and can and will be altered. It can be altered in as little as a generation, and it is doing just that, because the collective mind of humanity now is changing. It is evolving, as you have heard, as you already know, and as you are experiencing. As this evolution unfolds more quickly now, and as humanity becomes accustomed to its purpose, which is the discovery of the meaning of life, as life changes, the physical attributes of the body will begin to change as well. Again, in as little as a generation, and they are already changing. Another error in thinking, in collective thinking, is that the brain is in charge of defining the body and what it is capable of. In this way, or as long as the brain continues to think that it is in charge of the body and of your experiences, your experiences will remain limited. Because the brain then, rather than opening the door, to the soul, to allow for the infusion of more filaments of light, those that you left behind, knowing, thinking that you would return to them at some point during your life, by then brain, human brain, is thinking, oh, we have it all under control now. Thank you very much. We have no more need of your services, it says to the soul. We have everything we need right here for I am a strong and capable and very smart brain. And look at all that I have done for this body already. And so the brain takes charge of the body, and it dresses itself instead of in filaments of light. It dresses itself in, well, belief systems. 
and it orders these in the same way that the soul is able to order infinite filaments of light the brain sets about ordering a limited amount of belief systems and ideas some of which would be considered creative or open-ended or expansive but they are limited and once the brain has ordered organized for your awareness a limited set of belief systems then it stands to reason already that you will also have a limited set of experiences of ideas and matters not how you will order these or reorder them they are limited and that is why you see many lives shuffling about shuffling the same cards but in a different order shuffling together all of the different ideas that it has had but because they are limited they always appear to be just a little bit different so that this looks a little bit like that and this life looks a little bit like the other one and this experience looks a little bit like the one I had several years ago a little bit improved upon and like that when the connection to the soul is more open-ended the experiences I tell you I promise you are much more expansive you may in essence reinvent a life many times over during a life but you see the belief system for one that you must choose a certain career and abide by that for life that allows you to have a limited career span with only a certain set of ideas or ideals to live by and so you are constrained by the brain's belief system by the culture belief system by the generations belief system because these form a part of your collective reality as well every generation belongs like a club to a certain belief system or practice associated with that generation each one then subscribes to a certain health plan in some they are more expanded others more limited each generation has certain beliefs about itself its longevity its ability to defend against illness or disease or germs and of course you begin to see the effects of this change now too this particular generation has been exposed to a good deal of germ warfare for instance and so the body begins to arm itself to defend against certain criteria whether it is those of the pesticide variety or those that have been infused into what are the different influenzas and such now the body's brain begins to fear certain influences influenzas for instance to defend against certain germs before they have even appeared and the thought process then is that the body is at war it is attempting to defend against the process of aging it must fight that well that fighting I tell you causes a good amount of stress for the cells in the body if your body is at war then like it or not your brain is also at war thinking of what it can do or what environment is safe or unsafe for you to be in and so you put up your defenses which is the same as putting up your walls and so the benefits the light filaments infusions of light from your soul they are blocked from a brain that by then does not know better and in its own desire to be of benefit to you to assist you instead it does not allow you to enter the more infinite realms of health that would be available to you otherwise and so of course it would be wise whenever possible 
to allow these walls to fall. And in order to do that, the belief systems that built the walls, they must be taken down, block by block, thought by thought, and cell by cell, if possible. So if the brain is not in charge of the body, who or what is? If the brain is not in charge of the body's thoughts and how it offers itself and how it monitors and experiences itself in this life, who or what? The soul? Well, yes, to a great degree, yes, but it is not felt because it is not seen, and humanity at this stage is yet uncertain how to embrace what it cannot touch or see or smell. Now, interestingly, science will come to the rescue where this is concerned, for it will not be much, much longer before the field of energy that surrounds the body is detected in such a measurable way that it can be charted. And once it can be charted, in much the same way that humanity eventually decoded the human genome, it will also begin to decode the human energy field into true patterns that can be understood and studied. And of course, one will then discover what for now we will simply call divine intelligence. There will be other words for it later. But for now, we will simply leave it to the realm of the divine. At first, it will be thought that it is only the body's energetic field, what you may term the auric field. But when that is studied a little bit more in detail, it will be seen that it is not simply the body's energy field, but the body itself. Layers and layers and layers of different fields of the body make up the body itself. Everything, from the thought patterns to the brain waves, to the physical organs of the body, to the platelets in the blood, the nerve endings, the synapses, everything is part of the energy field. And for the first time it will be seen that the body is not solid, that it simply appears that way. If it is detected that the body is not solid, then the ways to understand all forms of energy as not solid will finally be understood. This will not dawn easily upon humanity and there will be great struggles in the halls of science and even in the halls of those that make law. For imagine that those who then begin to define a body differently would then define almost everything differently. If a body is not a body, what is it? If a body is only an energy field, then is anything other than an energy field? And if it is only an energy field, how can we regulate it, understand it, what is solid and what is not? And then it will come truly into the halls of those who make law and who govern the lands for the definition of life itself, as you might imagine, will come under question. Now it is humanity considers and when does life begin? Does it begin at conception? Does it begin at physical birth? And if they cannot agree upon when it begins, after a time, once this subject is truly explored, you will see that they will not be able to agree on when it ends, or where it goes, where it begins again, or when it goes from here to there. So very interesting times are upon humanity. Now, during this time of transition, the bodies are more uncertain than ever. Truly, your bodies do not know if they are coming or going. They do not know how much rest they need or how to achieve that restful state. For many 
fall to sleep, and the body is not rested, and many cannot sleep, and the body is not rested. Now, the only purpose for rest is the body's ability to rejuvenate itself or to realign with the filaments of light. Because your awareness, you see, when you are awake in your body, are very aligned with your physical attributes and your physical life and your physical experiences and the processes associated with determining and discovering the meaning of life through experience. When you are asleep, the unlimited springs to life again. And even if your belief systems, while you are awake, will tell you that you are a limited being, only capable of living upon the earth, fifty or seventy or one hundred or one hundred and twenty years, your awareness already tells you otherwise. When you are not then in your waking state, you are not tethered to time. Instead, you become tethered to the unlimited or to the soul. And so your connection with the soul deepens while you are asleep. And the soul is able to restructure or, in essence, remake or repair some of the damage, environmental, collateral damage, we could call it, that you sustain during a waking day. The only purpose of sleep, then, is that the body untethers itself from time and is able to experience timelessness. It is able to float or expand or direct itself in many different ways. The brain benefits by this, but many times it does not wish to. Many times the brain will absent itself from this process, and so it is brain that enters a dreamlike state that is somewhat entertaining or even nightmarish. It is all simply entertainment to the brain. Now, brain and mind are not the same. Mind is awareness. Mind is a bridge between brain and soul, or between physical meaning of life and the greater meaning of life, which is not restricted to the physical. Mind is also collective, but again, it is unrestricted. Mind can become interested in time, but it is not limited to time in the same way that brain is. And so a brain, for instance, is the clock watcher part of you. It is one o'clock, it is three o'clock, it is time to go to work, it is time to go to sleep, it is time to eat. And then there is the mind. The mind is interested in time, but more as an idea. I would like to have the time to explore this land. I would like to have time to read a book. I would like time to develop this ability. So you see, time is still related very much to calendar and to clock, but a little bit more in terms of exploring either the possible or likewise it can be the impossible. The mind, if it is overly directed by brain, will simply say, too bad I cannot explore this place or that idea. Too bad I will never do this or have that ability. And so that is why it is important to use the brain, develop the mind, and to continue not the search for meaning in life, but the discovery and the enlivening of the meaning of life through experience, through process, through processing thought, sharing, and exchanging wisdom.